Hey everyone, this is episode 6 of Sparta's World. I'm your host, Sparta3G. And I have one announcement to make before we start this episode going. Now, there's only one news I had to cover, and that's just, it's not really that much of a news, but if you are in Japan and you're planning to go to the exhi- exhibition of Naruto's, you know, all the, the manga chapters, some new ones, some very old one, classic, you know, it has that little museum-esque style, and, you know, they already reported there's going to be two one-shots, one for like a pre-order, and one is the, uh, when you enter the museum itself, well, you know what I mean when I say museum, so, we found out two of them are, one is Kiba, I believe it's a Kiba one-shot about uh, romance, it might end up being some comical, I'm not even sure that person is the one from the chapter 700, the cat lady, or is it someone else, I really don't know, but that's the way, that's the one shot is going to be about, and for the other one is the Team 7, apparently it's about something about uh, Kakashi Mask, now I wouldn't get my hopes up if you're trying to find find out that that chapter, uh, that one shot, let's say, is going to actually show his face. It's, it's rather funny that this one has happened twice so f- already. One in that small little uh, specials. I forgot which one. It came in one of the data books. Or I, I think it's one of the fan book. I don't remember. But all I know is that the anime version. They actually expanded on that. By, by you know making his own episode. A lot of different um, add-ons. The, the one in the original version. only has the whole ramen shop. You know, they was hoping they're going to see his face because he's going to eat. So, you know, that whole scenario. It's kind of funny they're doing that again. But I could get my information wrong on the Team 7. But yes, this is before Part 2 Shippuden days. So, yeah, that's your 2 one show. Now, there are many news and I kind of wish I did gather them. But unfortunately, I actually uh, uh, lost track in time with those. So... Next time, it will definitely be, you know, up to date, all gather up. I would say a lot of people are, like, um, so happy to see, see these returning anime, these new anime. Uh, Gintama, you know, is getting heavily praised by so many people in Japan. Um, you know, it, it, it's nice to see Gintama coming back. And apparently they make fun of um, one of the real life um, situation that happened in Japan. I, I forgot what it exactly is, but they did that. And, you know, it's rather funny how they started off the episode with, um, you know, with the the apologies for, you know, coming back again. It's, it's hilarious, and I'm happy they come back. I believe Digimon did, in fact, got delayed, or it was never renounced. I think it really got delayed, though, because a lot of people keep saying it, it was going to come in spring. It was going to come in April 4th, I believe. And it never happened. Now, we are assuming it's just going to come in summer. And it's funny because I have not seen not one trailer for Digimon Try. So, I guess that was bound to happen. I mean, it's the weirdest hype. I know, you know, I know there's a poll in Japan that Digimon Try didn't really get that high up there. Along with the other anime that they voted for. But for us, it was like in the top five. And it's funny because it kind of tells you are we very much a nostalgic guy? Are we very, are we very much stay in one thing? You know, it's like we can never move on. Is that how we work? I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying Japan don't move on. I mean, we got they got Doraemon. They got Dragon Ball Z reruns of Kai and even the old days back then. But point is, you know, I guess it's like different folks with different strokes and stuff like that. So it's interesting to see the difference of um, the mindset. But in any case, it, it does depend on the people who you're interviewing in terms of um what to what's well in terms of doing the survey so you know you can't say we just we just we just got everybody survey which anime you want to see the most so you know there's a million people in the united states along with japan so you know uh, you can't really judge too much on that analysis but basically digimon try has been delayed i have no idea when it's coming out so 
Well, that's kind of sucks for me. I was hoping for some nostalgic trip, but I guess that will do much later on. Now, the announcement I want to make. We're going to start with the podcast scheduling. As you may know, it has been coming out on Saturdays. Well, in two weeks, uh, basically after this episode and the next one, I'm going to change the scheduling. The schedule is now going to be two episodes per week because I find myself actually easier to do with this way. It's funny because it's double the work in my in 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 the mindset of all things. You will assume that it will have it will, it will put me in a lot of more work, but in reality, I believe it's actually going to be more suitable for me. The only time, the only thing is, is how to make time in terms of like, um, what would be the right time, what timing schedule would I be working on? Like how I'm going to try to record these episodes while I'm at work or after work, even though I don't have that much time after work or I do have much time, but it's like, you know, I wanted to do other things because, you know, there's a lot of things to do in life itself. But I believe that's why I made it into two weeks later rather than next week. I was going to plan it this week, next week, but I have to find a way to make time. And it is going to be two episodes per week. I know that's for sure. I'm just trying to find the best method to record these two episodes and now the scheduling that that being said the scheduling is going to be on Tuesday and then the other episode will be on Friday that's how it's going to be from that point forward until further notice of course but the reason why I thought of doing this now is because it feels like I'm always going to be behind in terms of discussion you know, with manga, it has its own scheduling time set. For example, Tokyo Ghoul Re, the next chapters has um the next check cha- the next chapter spoilers already out, and I'm already behind, and I want to discuss about this chapter. But now everybody's gonna be like, "Well, that's a kind of old news now, isn't it?" And I'm thinking to myself like, "How am I gonna try to talk about this chapter and predict the next chapter?" If the next chapter spoiler is already out and that pretty much destroyed my mindset of anticipation in a way. It's kind of like, you know, like, um, it's kind of like trying to do the One Piece review very late on. Trying to guess what's the, you know, the if you read the latest chapter, you will know this uh, one crazy cliffhanger that has been um, talked about for a while. And just imagine if I do that late, and then and then they, there's a spoiler, and let it show it, and it's like, well, I came late. That's meaningless. <laughs> so, I don't want to do that. I want to be on time. And I realize a lot of at manga scheduling, it has been um, you know, it has been um, fixed it. Um, not really. Uh, not like you know how one day with Naruto, One Piece, and Bleach, it's always gonna be on a Thursday. It used to be Wednesday, but it's gonna always be on Thursday. Other series like um, Haku, Tokyo Ghoul, and so on, they have their own different kind of scheduling. Unless they finally getting their scheduling right now. Like, uh, unless they finally got their own time set. Because these two series, or any other series, are getting more and more popular. So, I guess you could say the, the translator, the workers, that does the scanlation... I guess they started putting more effort and it started to put more, um, you know, more serious to this whole translation. You know, it, it's no longer becoming like something that's like nobody really cares that much. So we're not going to translate it that effortly, you know. But then again, those guys, you know, it's not an easy work. Those translation, those getting those those um, manga pages, they're not easy. So that I would that I know. But that said, you know, I don't know what's the man- manga scheduling. Um, it's starting to seem more clear as times go on. Especially with Tokyo Ghoul has been coming out on the Saturdays. Which is great for a lot of fans. Great for me as well. I just don't know. <laughs> like, I didn't know it was going to be on a Saturday. Because by the time I post this episode, that discussion 
my prediction would be invalid. I mean, not the discussion. I could still talk about my chapter review. It, it'll be all nice and dandy. But, you know, when it comes to predicting stuff, that's going to be invalid. Because it's going to be like, well, you know, we see it now. I mean, I, I know every episode is always different. And, you know, prediction doesn't really hurt. Because it's always nice to predict things and either get it right or wrong. I understand that. But for me, I like to be on ahead of time. I like to um, be on time. I like to discuss with you guys. I like to share thoughts and then see what, what it takes me at, in the end. And plus, you know, it actually be more suitable for me. And what I mean is that if I were to separate these two episodes, Tuesday will be, um, so far, there's a lot of manga that comes on on a Monday. You got Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, Baku no Hero Academy uh, Fairy Tale And since um, Tokyo Ghoul is on a Saturday lately I could talk about that So that's like 4 manga right there And it'll be a shorter episode Because I don't need to worry about One Piece, Bleach And um, What was the other series in there? Um, <laughs> I actually don't remember But uh, now that I think about it, it might need more space for Friday episode. Maybe I probably had to add two more manga, but I'm trying to remember the other two, which is funny because I got these already up to discuss, and I can't even think of the other two. Actually, I don't think that's the other two. There's no more, not much to it. But I can add the anime episodes. Now about the anime, I'm putting myself on a hiatus. Well, more or less a hiatus. For anime up to 8 May because right now I'm trying to um, gather a lot of information in April and trying to get things done in April with other things that's not anime or manga related it's just uh, personal things and there's a lot of good animes that I missed out and a lot of good series that I didn't know that was it, it even existed because I'm being you know, barbaric by the entire mainstream stuff. Which they could be good, but some of them could be like, you know, a takeaway. But, you know, some of them are like so under underground. Like, I'm hearing about this shoujo that's really, really good. My special person told me it's a really, really good series. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, that's got to be something. Especially with this person. So it's all about is now, uh, is good, if it's good or nothing. Which, it says a lot, guys. <laughs> At least to me. It's, it's good or nothing. So, basically, um, there's a lot of this different series that, you know, you're not going to see, like, I got a million sales. They got a, it's super popular. I mean, when it comes to pop popularity these days, that don't really mean they're great or good. They're just popular, period. You already got other series, movies, that are popular really popular for either the right reason for the wrong reason or it's just not your taste i mean look at the 50 shades of gray i have no idea why it's popular and i'm not a huge i'm not even a fan I, I despise it but the point is it's popular is it is it because it's great is it because it's good to me eh, no way <laughs> no way but the point is you know popularity is going to override Something that's like a hidden gem. It's kind of like the mainstream movies. It's going to override the independent film. And the all, only the hardcore movie critics are going to acknowledge those movies. So, basically, I had to go underneath the underneath, you know. The whole charade. And there are a lot of great ones. And I'm going to start watching them in May. And... Not only because I want to get the things settled in April, but I do want to get like a special device in May that actually will put me a lot of more time to work with and a lot of more, um, um, a lot of, uh, it will make me be more involved with you guys at Tumblr in my Tumblr page. And it's, you know, I could bring out more discussions, more mangas to the discuss. Again, there's going to be a lot of manga that I might not cover in here, but I'm going to cover in the Tumblr page. So basically think of my Tumblr page as a um, as my Twitter. That's what I'm pretty much using that like. 
And if you haven't followed, it's basically sparta 3 gtumblrcom And you can follow me there. You know, you will always see my me discussing the manga, discussing some aspect, putting some di- some here and there. Um, joke around, not not too, not too, not like an offensive way. It's just joke around, you know. It's like my Twitter page. So, whatever you see, I'm gonna post a lot of different updates, and you, I'm gonna be more involved around May because I'm gonna get this um a device to make to you know be up to date with everyone else, and you know because work my work time I, I'm very free. Believe it or not, it's it's funny because I expect to be a hard worker. I am a hard worker, but I have a lot of time. <laughs> Maybe I'm overworking. I don't know. So, yeah. May, I'm going to start watching a lot of animes. That brings along with me reviewing animes. And not just the episode, but the entire thing in the Tumblr page. I think I'm going to do it, use the Tumblr page. I'm going to use it as a, uh, uh, a review site. So, you know, you guys could see, like, if this manga, this anime is worth it, is it good to watch, what are you, what this genre is suitable for you, and, you know, I'm going to do a lot of things of that. I actually wanted to do a video review, but I know there's going to be a copyright infringement at YouTube, so maybe it might be a Tumblr exclusive when it comes to the video review. I don't know at this time, but I really wanted to do one because it seems like it seems like not only it's going to be a lot of fun, but it seems like it's going to be pretty informative. So I'm going to try to work on that. And we'll see. May is when I go back to anime. Manga, I'm, I'm still reading a lot of manga here and there because, you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like just reading literature. You know, that's pretty much it. With anime, you know, you're watching, but you got to hear things. You got to listen to what's going on. You got to hear the music, the mood setting. You know, it's a little bit more, um, you know, more focused. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, when it comes to manga, you're focused on the art and uh, the presentation of, like, the facial expression, the dialogues and all that stuff. With anime, you got to pay attention with the, the soundings, the, the surroundings, the animation, the artwork, and so on. So it has a different focus. So with anime, you know, you always get like over twenty minutes, uh, over twenty minute episode. So that's a little bit more focus time to put in than the manga. The manga you could do it any time, anywhere. You know, the same thing with anime, but unless you don't have a good Wi-Fi connection or you don't have an LTE in the in the in a specific area, then you're out of luck. Or you could just download them, then you'd be okay. But with manga, you're guaranteed to have them because it's just easy to load. The literature, the pictures, the images, pretty much. So I'm going to work on the anime next month. Now, the last thing I want to cover is talking about this little new side thing. I haven't got a title yet. It's, it's still in a working title. Uh, pretty much it's going to be like a soapbox of mine. And what I'm going to... St- do there is you know just be a one thing extra to cover only one subject because you know sometimes a podcast could go either too long if I were to include them so I didn't want to do that and I just want to make it into a separate thing so I want to make it like a a special soapbox thing I don't know if it's a working title but it's going to be those extras and that's where I'm only going to discuss about that uh, and my first episode will be the new Naruto spinoff when that comes. Well, I believe it's coming up in two weeks from today. And so, you know, I'm going to discuss about that. That will be my first episode extra. So, and it will be on time. It said it like on a working schedule. This one won't have a schedule. This one it will come out whenever whenever I feel like it's the right time to show off. Or whenever it's like... um. You know, the new headline. I think that's the way how reviewer works today. You know, bringing out the episode of a review from whatever the time comes. So, whenever whenever I finish reading Naruto spinoff, that will be the day I will review. Hopefully, if I have the time, and hopefully there will be no overworking schedule. But yes, I'm going to have those kind of special thing. It's not gonna. It's not gonna just be about like you know review of one specific series. It's gonna be like a discussion thread. Be like, um, be like Naruto spinoff. 
what's wrong with this series what's good what's um is is this is co- correct if this is not correct i'm not just talking about naruto i'm just talking about in general and like whatever specific topic i come across so that's something i wanted to to um do and you know that's that's going to come out when the the first naruto spin-off chapter is going to come out so and there's going to be more of that now now um so yeah there's there's going to be a new schedule starting in 2 weeks it's going to be on Tuesday it's going to cover Tokyo Ghoul 7 Deadly Sins Baku no Hero Academia and Fairy Tale while the um, Friday one is going to cover One Piece and Bleach I'm going to try to find a way to cover uh, another two series I don't know maybe it will be the shorter episode of the two and you know for me it's, it's more helpful because we have Tuesday and Friday at least I could get it done with those series and the episode would be shorter rather than try to be like over an hour and 30 minutes. So far, they average, they, it has been averaged to one hour and 30 minutes. So that's good for me. So with the later, with the new scheduling plan, I guess you could say it's going to be maybe two hours in total, but at least there will be a separate episode. And I'm going to start like, Giving you the numbers of which, which at what time you're gonna hear the review of Tokyo Ghoul or you know other series, so that way you don't need to um, hear the other series that you probably don't care or don't like or you or whatever. Like I don't want to hear a fairy tale review. I want to hear the Seven Deadly Sin review, stuff like that. I'm gonna f- adjust the timer. I'm still working on. Finding a way to make a transition from one review to the next, I'm still gonna I'm still working on that. Um, I'm gonna make my I'm gonna um, start I'm gonna start working on my t- YouTube page. You know, make it nicer, make it make it look like it's not a, just a random page. It, you, you know, it's all about the presentation, I guess. I'm um, still working on uh, <laughs> trying to get an intro. I was actually asking my good friend to get a to get a um, uh, a DJ or somebody, you know, doing a good sound mixing stuff to get to get an intro. Cause I, my insp- inspirational person, the the guy that made the guy that inspired me to do this podcast, you know, he has his own theme song, but he has been around for a while. So you know, me, I'm inexperienced. He's experienced. So there you go. But I'm I'm working on all these things because I really want to make a, my mindset, this whole plan I have in my head, I really want to make it into reality in the podcast. And again, it's not easy. It's 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 time consuming. I realize that. And you know, with this whole new mic, you know, me working things out, trying to plan ahead, planning things. I'm, you know, like, again, I, I'm i still working on plannings, and, you know, so far, I'm, I've been doing okay, um, just try not to do the last minute, because whenever, whenever you try to do the last minute, it actually doesn't come out neatly, and I learned that the hard way, so, yeah, that's all my announcement, um, I'm really excited to do this whole two, two, two days, I'm sorry, there's two podcasts per week scheduling. I'm excited. I'm actually excited to go to May watching newer anime, even the older ones, and I'll start reviewing them. Starting to write my reviews in my Tumblr page. I'm excited to try to do the soapbox things and see what I could bring it out. And yeah, uh, it's a lot of future plans, a lot of future projects coming in next month, or or you know, with the soapbox is coming out this month with Naruto spinoff. So, I'm excited to see where I, what I can do. And that's it. Let's get to the review, shall we? Tokyo Ghoul Read Chapter 24. So, we left off with, you know, that cliffhanger that Ure pretty much was about to do something bad. But instead, it's, he actually don't remember how to get back out of there. So, he doesn't remember how to leave and everything else. Which, you know, hey, it could have been worse, right? It could have been the exact idea that a lot of people think that he was going to leave Mizuki behind 
I thought the same, to be honest, because, come on, this, this guy's all about promotion, promotion, promotion. How many times you ever hear about this whole promotion thing? It's pretty much his um his um, love interest, that promotion and stuff like that. Whatever. But it, it could have been worse. So they're going to reroute and try to find the uh, Orgiri hideout, because, you know, they are still in the facility, and they are just waiting for them to leave the, the entire CCG investigators to get out. And because Masuki recalls that there were a bunch of them, you know, the you could say they they are still in the hiding, and Ue, he still thinks about promotions, and you know, because of his um characteristic, you always get the his real thoughts while saying out loud, and it feel like kind of like fills the blanks. For example, if it's like, you know, do you think there would be anybody down there and stuff like that, and like you know, to already already at the, the Origiri hideout and he's like I hope so stuff like that or anything like that but instead it will have a parenthesis that not you so you know that's his characteristic which I thought that's kind of a neat feature of this character to give us like uh not really saying out loud and you know all in a mindset of him talking about promotion or talking about his true feelings like you know Misuki is like you're right you are useless you're pretty much useless and he's like that's not true you know, stuff like that. I kind of like this kind of idea of a character. So, Mizuki wants to do more for the team because, you know, while it was nice of him doing the whole, um, being dressed up as a girl in the, in the auctions and, you know, it, it did made, manage to have them to do the, to do the ambush. It, he still wants to do more, more to that. You know, he wants to like fight on and actually defeat these, um, ghouls. Kind of, because, you know, Masuki is a rookie in compare, uh, like, you know, the most rookie out of all of them, as you could see in the first chapter, you know, learning lessons, reading a book, asking Sasaki for lessons or un- understanding what is going on, uh, like how, how the whole procedure of a whole nine yard. And so, you know, now he's like, he wants to do more to it. And, you know, I guess he's coming along with this guy. And it seems to be... Okay, a lot of people were were, um, were like a little confused. A lot of people believe that he is injured still and it opened a wound. And some people actually went further to say she's having her time, his time. Remember, she was or she is a she is a girl. Was I'm not really sure. You know, it's confusing because the we got the backstory of him talking about wanting to be a boy. And I don't know what comes from that, but it seems that her his time is arrived. And the way I believe that's the case is because the way how she's he see this is hard because he is a she or whatever you know. Point is, it, when you, when you look at the the, the panels, it kind of shows it kind of give you the idea that it's bleeding from the from the spot from the place that you should know where it's bleeding from. When it comes to that time, so it doesn't show you like the wound is being opened. It doesn't show you like you know the blood coming from that wound exactly. It's just coming from like a like it just shows a little tiny splat. So you get the idea that this is not a wound. This is actually that time. So seems like it actually um it seems like it's gonna be a real bad, real 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 terrible situation. In the upcoming chapters, I know uh, it's gonna play a role. Of course, it might slow him down, and this—I don't know what's gonna happen. I hope for the best, especially when it comes to the end of the chapter. I hope for the best that these guys are gonna come out all well and not really heavily damaged or heavily, you know, differ- differentiate from the previous characters. So we'll see, but it, it is a bad nick of time and. It's interesting to see this kind of scenario being played in this manga. So we have Naki getting dominated. He's he's out of his mind, but he's getting really wrecked by the CCG investigators. They stab him repeatedly. They over they outnumber him up to the point Yasumi, or you're better known as Hinami. She got worried that N- N- Naki. Is getting really um you know he's getting himself killed. He's pretty much at the peak that he most likely will die as long as they uh the longer they don't the longer they take 
and the longer they don't really help them out because there's only two ghoul out there and that's not really that much especially when akira is there you know she's she's no rookie she she got a lot of experience she pretty much she pretty much could kick ass so yeah now is a real bad time this kind of tells me that yasumi might actually go up there and help naki now i could be wrong uh it is a tease because it because yasumi could meet up with akira and if they meet up to get, if they meet up in one place, you know, Kira has the same power, has the uh, quickie of her dad. So imagine, you know, well, imagine seeing that. Like, you know, I don't even know what's what's gonna be like, where exactly how it's gonna go down. It, it's interesting, but I don't know. It's, it could be a teaser. It could be too soon. It could be now even. So I don't know if, if that's the idea that Ishida Sensei. Is going to take us there, but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe someone else will go out after Naki instead. Well, you know, again, anything is possible with this series. So we have um, Takizawa. You know, he's being cr- crazy as ever, being scary as ever, and then he was telling them like about fear because these two, these two, these two investigators, they're just, they're just like you know, pure panic. It is it is the most haunting thing for them to see because they are up that close with a with a ghoul that's just pretty much a dominant and it's a one eye ghoul so that's even more worse. And he's talking about fear. He's talking about how you know fear could be you know dis disable. It could be it could fade out if you become one of those things that you fear the most or stuff like that. And it's crazy because Takizawa, you know, you get the idea that this is, this is him. This is him. It's not like a brainwash, mind control, anything like that. This is him talking. This is him really being him, but in a very loose canon way because his mindset is just completely different from the last series. And you you, you just see him, how low he has fallen. It's, 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 I don't know sure what kind of feeling I'm supposed to feel. It's either sad or just disgruntled. I don't, I, it's hard to say. But I like this characteristic because it's like you once see the character from the last series all nice. You know, he had a pet, he had a sister, family, everything. Just a normal, innocent guy. He's supposed to be like a comic relief in some sort of way. And then we see him. Now he's uh, a killer. Now he's just crazy and scary and even. It's hard to say where his ending is going to go to. Either bad, like as in death, but then again, it's already bad enough with him. Being a one-eyed ghoul, just killing everybody that he knows, and these people are like uh, were peers of his, where they um, were t- taking lessons from him. Though they were like you know disrupting class, I guess you could say, talking talking during classes and stuff like that. So you know they realized that's Takizawa, and then Takizawa, you know, it, it's just kind of sad to see the the side by side. To Takizawa, the before and the and the after, or in this case, the then and now. So seeing Takizawa just being this case is just I don't know. It's just sad. And then he just killed them in the most brutal way. Actually, this chapter was kind of brutal. It's funny, kind of show uh, uh, why this is a Senen manga. So you know, because you got people getting cut off, getting stabbed through. This one's like uh, Takizawa just. Not only stabbed through this person, but also beheaded him or her. It's crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, I, this is really him. This is really Takizawa, people. And we find Ogiri hideout. So now it's going to get very interesting because I thought this would be on hold since we're supposed to do deal with the Nutcracker case. I mean, they are with Sas- Sasaki and the others, but... You know, the Orgiri hideout spot, you know, they've it's been found. We're going to see Madam again. We're going to probably see other characters, Yasumi and uh, the torso guy. I have no idea where he's at, but he is there still. And, yeah, it's it's going to get very interesting. The, but, the, but the one that piques the interest is the very end. And that's where Takizawa found, finds Sasaki and the others. So, you know what that means. It's going to be a one hell of a match. 
Um, I thought I I think the, the Nutcracker case was will get solved here. I do think maybe Takizawa will be fighting Sasaki alone, and the other two they probably end up going to um meet the Nutcracker because that is the main priority. So they need to get that out of the way because she is becoming a you know a real real threat. I mean, it, it was like a A and now it's an S. So. That's pretty bad. And now we got Takizawa, who's pretty much like a double S to me at this case. So, yeah, this chapter is really, really good. There's so many stuff happening. It's funny because I'm assuming it's, uh, I'm assuming it was going to like hold off a lot of things. But this chapter proved me wrong. We're getting into a lot of things. We're getting the Origiri hideout, which I believe Ayato might be there. So Uri versus him would be interesting to see, especially his um updated Kwe Kwe. You know, since um, Uri did... um. Did um did that experiment to upgrade? It could be vital, but we'll see. Well, then we have um, Takizawa about to meet Sasaki. We still have the whole um, Uda and um, Hiroko fighting. It's, it's still it's still a lot of things going on. It's like uh, this chapter has a lot of teas, so I don't know what it's gonna lead to. But this chap this arc itself is already a uh, a huge a huge um important factor to these characters mainly Sasaki since I do believe that that Kaneki inside of him is going to come out once more and I don't know how much different it would it make for his character and his other and his own team so overall this chapter was one was, was a really 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 good chapter and seeing Takizawa being so differentiate from his past self is is, is sad or I don't know <laughs> it's just it's crazy. So next chapter, I don't know what to anticipate. I did read some of the spoilers, and I I think one of them is gonna make is gonna blow my mind, and that's and I and it's pretty much the obvious one. I I think a lot of people should be ex, be excited for the next chapter with that you know the ending. The ending is already just tells you how much craziness is gonna be in the next chapter, and I just can't wait for it. So. One Piece, yeah. Oh boy, I still waiting for confirmation if the last page saying that this chapter, um, sorry, this manga, One Piece, is going to be on hiatus for another week because that's not fair. <laughs> it is not fair, not fair at all. In fact. The reason why it's not unfair is because, oh, come on, we all know what's the deal. If we read the manga chapter 783, we all know what it's about. It's about the very end of that chapter. Not only that, it's the fact that we're fighting, uh, we're finally seeing Don Flamingo versus Luffy full fledged, and with a lot of drama pieces happening in this chapter, you know, it only builds up more hype to this whole scenario. So. Why the hiatus? Really? You gotta be shitting me. Oh boy. Okay, let's talk about this chapter. But obviously, from my from when you hear my reaction, it's obvious that this chapter was great. It was a great chapter, and I really, really, really hate Oda to actually to give it a give us a one week break, just one week break, just to see the the next event. So let's not get carried away. Um. Honestly, it's a great chapter on its own because it has a good action scene, which I don't even know if the anime could do it justice because I haven't seen the anime in a, such a long time. So I, I'm hoping it does this justice. Um, it has a great jo- drama pieces because, you know, Oda is known for that. And it felt like this whole arc, regardless how long this arc is, it's coming nicely to this whole scenario because it feels like you know we were this arc needed to build up the character that's only in this arc or maybe it will come back again you know with um cabbage or Bartolomeo or etc you know I, I do believe Saba will come back again uh for the later future arcs but this arc does feel like it's a huge turn of event it's a huge development and I feel like the very, I feel like the aftermath is is where it's all going to matter the most because everybody's going to change, 
um, it's not maybe not to straw hat crews, but mainly to the, everyone else surrounding the marine. You know, if the flamingo dies, get or lose whatever, it, a lot of things is gonna change place. You know, they don't have no more shijibukai of, of Don flamingo. They, they, um, you know, the higher up is gonna be real pissed about Don Flamingo being defeated by Monkey D. Luffy, who is a, a wanted criminal, of course. And you know, the whole scenario is is it, it, it feels like this whole fight is gonna it has a lot of momentum going on, it has a lot of uh, a lot of stake in mind, you know. So this is this. It does feel like it means a lot, and I mean a lot. I mean, like I, I know, every arc means something, right? But this one, it feels like it's gonna mean the most. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna carry a huge development right in, in their hands. Yeah, so I know it's been since it's been since the Marine Ford War arc that has this amount of pressure, amount of um, amount of uh, in stake, everything about it. So. I, I I'm not saying we should just rush the end to the end to see what's going to happen next because this fight is important and not only that the 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 action set pieces are really great in this chapter. It's short but it's great and it's already built up for the next chapter. So let's get to the chapter itself. We got back with Turbo do explode himself, try to kill everybody else or surrounding. Well, not the flamingo, of course. But Luffy and Law survive, and I it was good to, it was good enough to know that we're done with dealing with the side side villains, the henchmen. We're now we're getting to the main event with Don Flamingo. So Luffy saves Law and he hands over to Robin to put him in the safekeeping and you know help him out. You know since you got that little princess to do the the little tears or anything to heal them up easily, they just have to get the arm back. But Law refused to do all that saving life of his because his desire to see the Flamingo dead is still running high. And, you know, he, re- he, he feels like he feels ashamed that he has to rely on Luffy of all people. Not because it's Luffy, but because the fact he can't do it on his own, which he wished for such a long time. So seeing him, you know, admitting that Luffy is the only way to see Don Flamingo defeat and he wants to see it with his own eyes he wants to see him be defeated if not if Luffy lose he wants to die with Luffy because that's how he's gonna take it so pretty much you could say Law is putting his soul on Luffy uh, metaphorically speaking so this is a you know again this is still in character and it's really it really shows how much this guy really wants Don Flamingo die and really wants to see his defeat he, I mean you look into the flashback again it is it, it, really um pretty convincing why he really wants to see this end I mean I wanted to see this end because not just because of the arc is too long but it's done for Mingo this guy has been around for for so, almost a decade or even, maybe it is a day de- uh, more than a decade I don't remember but it's that long so seeing done for Mingo being taken down is something that's been building up for such a long time now you know, Cabbage, he was supposed to help out Robin to take take Law to the safest place. But instead, he stayed by with him. So they pretty much going to, like, die together if Lou, Luffy were to lose. So this is interesting to see how these two are playing out in this scenario. And like I said, it's like we need a long arc to understand these characters. And seeing them doing what they do now is, um, you know, it, it feels... um. Rewarding. It feels like it feels like you, you you have some care to these characters. It's not like well, whatever you are, I don't care, you know. Because they kind of did that with Thriller Bark arc, when like these characters just come out of nowhere, these pirates, because they got lost a shadow and then it's just they're just trying to act cool and stuff like that. It's like you kind of did it too late there. So with these characters, I care for them. So I like this. I like where they're, these guys going. And you know, we always get to see more characteristic with these characters. So it's like understanding. Why they do, why they're doing the way they're doing? Now again, we see, see we start seeing more Luffy versus Don Flamingo. They got a nice action set pieces, and I'm hoping the anime would do its justice. And then we have Don Flamingo. Always wanted to meet meet up with Luffy because ever since the beginning of time, 
where Luffy becomes a wanted criminal. And the fact he has the name Monkey D, the D part actually, because, you know, we got to remember the flashback with the whole D, especially Law was a D member as himself, which, well, you know, we, we, it'll be interesting to see if there's any more, uh, more information on the D because it we, we because we only know like something about them being the destruction for them the destruction of the the world or something like that. So I'm not sure we're gonna get more info on the D. Not now. Right now is personal. Right now it's between Don Flamingo and Luffy, and Don Flamingo. You know, he, he knows about Luffy for so long. He remembers him in a, in a war. And, you know, to the fact that they, they reached to the point that he's in his place. He is in his island trying to take it down. And everything went nuts. Everything lost his, lost his control. And pretty much the Flamingo is pre, uh, pu- putting blame on Luffy because, you know, everything was normal in terms of Don Flamingo lifestyle. Now everything just goes to structure to the point that everybody can't die. Because there's a time limit that this that Don Flamingo put on everybody. Like in 30 minutes, somebody will die. And then in 40 minutes, people were like, you know, getting crushed and stuff like that. And then by the end, everyone would die. And if anybody would put a blame, it would be Luffy. Because if Luffy never get in the way, life would have been just normal daily life. In, in terms of whatever that island was working on. So... Pretty much, that's the, the the chapter. You know, it's a you're in my way. You know, this is Don Flamingo telling Luffy he's in his way for you know having all this crazy chaotic um, going on in this this small case of war. And Luffy, he's telling him he's out of the, he's in his way because he has making his friend cry, make them angry, and make them suffer. And now he wants, and Luffy wants to take him out once and for all because he is in his way, which I like that trade back from Luffy. Then we have the cliffhanger of all cliffhanger. He was about to do gear, not two, not three, but four, four, gear four. I have no idea what it's going to be about. It makes sense why he has it because in the uh, other arcs, it was not a, it was not a hard battle. They were easy battle to him. You know, they were ne- they were never like a uh, the battle that made them push over the limit or push it to the limit. So with Gear Four, it makes sense to use it now since this is Don Flamingo. He's like one of the top tier of 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 the Shijibukai or, or in general. This is like our one of the big bosses that we finally get to see in action. I mean, of course we know other characters, but you know it's been such a long time. So seeing Don Flamingo being taken taken care of by Luffy you know we gotta see the best of the best so Luffy doing gear 4 I don't know what's gonna be about gear 2 is a is using blood gear 3 was using bone gear 4 I have no idea it could be something and uh it could be um I don't know I, I can't think of anything it's gonna be interesting I really like this chapter this chapter got me really really hype only to find out it got is on break. What a tease! I hated that fact. <laughs> I hated that. I hated that. But yes, this was a really great chapter. I enjoyed it a lot. I read it like a couple more times. This is um this is what I've been waiting for. I want to play a boss music. I'm not sure which boss music. <laughs> so yeah, this was a great chapter, guys. So we go to Bleach, chapter 623. And, um, you know, uh, we're still in the same spot. It's kind of a bummer that we're actually in the same spot for the past three chapters. Or four chapters. I think it's four chapters now. But, you know, in, in this case, this chapter wasn't as bad. Um, it was actually good. It was a decent chapter. At least in my opinion, it was a decent chapter. Because we got some little information here and there. We're still having progress the story or anything else we don't know what happened to Ichigo and the rest we do we're still in the same spot as I mentioned so we're not in the Soul King Palace I don't know what's taking so long but this is Bleach this is the pacing for you guys so we have Aizen try to strike the Soul King's Palace but it failed because apparently his power is being in fact controlled under the control being taken care of by none other than Maui. And yeah, 
that's that's the case uh, because you know Raya Su it, 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 that this whole sealing process from his it doesn't cancel the, his Raya Su rather it just maintain it keep it in check so it's not like you know, so it's like if Aizen could do a huge blast it's gonna tone down because that's what Mario Mario Seal does you know his technical techno- technology stuff. So, yeah, that's the case. So, at least we know now. Still, kind of broken, don't you think? I mean, come on. Aizen is, like, really that powerful? That Well, it's not that quick, but still. You know, it only... But it, in this chapter, in a way, it kind of gives you the idea. Maybe, just maybe, he's going to end up being the boss again. Like, he might be the, another final boss. And at least it's a character that we know. And, you know, maybe some of us like... So, uh, at least it won't feel out of place. It won't feel like, who is this guy come out of nowhere? I mean, Yauch, you know, he's doing a neat job for being, a, I guess, the final villain. Because, he, you know, the whole connection with Ichigo and everything else. It, I mean, it's alright. It's not bad. With Aizen, it's something that you will remember. So, seeing an old villain coming back to be the main villain, it's not such a bad thing. I, I just don't know if they could beat him this time. Or if they do beat him, it can't be that much of an ass pull. But we'll see. We'll just see. So, pretty much we got the confirmation on Ice and Power. And then, apparently we still have the remaining Quincy. Which I was afraid because I didn't want us to drag out the fights. I just want to move to the next part of the story. Luckily, one of the Quincy... Actually turned back on the other Quincy. And killed them. And that ended up being Boss B. So we had the Boss B. We had the zombie girl and that little girl. We have those three are alive. And they actually want to help them to get to the Soul King's palace. More or less. So this is a nice turn of event. Because, you know, Yaoj did abandon them. He just let them. He just he literally let them. He deserted them. So why not try to get a revenge on Yauch? Which they end up doing which they end up proclaiming at the very end. Wanting to you know, they're they're on the one condition, if they're gonna help them out if they're gonna help them out, then allow them to go with them as well. Because they want to take out Yauch themselves as well. Since Yauch is the one that deserted them, so it makes sense why this whole betrayal for the Queen is even occurring. It's funny because Kyoko, you know, more or less he asks them for assist, or more like, oh, more like sarcastically, like, aren't you? I suppose you're not gonna help me out here because you know we're trying to go to Soul King. Stuff shit is happening worse and worse. So I suppose you won't help us, right? So that ended up being like a proposition, but you know, it, it's a funny timing of that kind of way. So we we're having three Quincy joining up with the Shinigami, which you know we didn't see the reaction from the Shinigami guys. We didn't see no reaction to see it like oh we approve this or we okay with this or like oh you gotta be kidding me you know stuff like that anything of that I I guess that's the next chapter the next chapter we we'll probably have a little bit more talking about like oh okay uh, we're gonna go there and we're gonna kick his ass too we're gonna we're gonna hear more of that but like are you sure we could trust you guys and stuff like that. Even though they already said, like, you not really a matter of trust. Enemy of my enemy is my friend. That's the case of the scenario. We're still in the same spot, though I do think maybe, just maybe the next chapter, we're finally getting to the next spot. Because, you know, now we got we got more recruitments. We got the Quincy being backing up the, backing up Goten 13 or whatever the main, remaining numbers now. So, yes, yeah, not a bad chapter. It's decent. Uh, I, I, I. I really wanted to move on already. It feels like this chapter could have been dealt with in the last chapter, if anything. Because, you know, the last chapter was small too. You just have Rukia, you know, uh, react. Then the whole team react and so on. It's not that much to cover. It's like we're getting one set piece to the next. Which, a lot of manga series, usually you always go to backtrack to one area to the next. Sometimes you'll mainly focus on one thing, but, you know, other series, they will have two different focus or maybe three even. So with with Bleach, it's like one big focus and it's like it doesn't really move around so much. 
we're still in the same spot and we're trying to get to the Soul King's Palace. So not only we don't know what happened to Ichigo and the others, we just don't know how this is all going to set up. And I'm still waiting for the other team members. I Supposedly Grimjaw is supposed to be alive, right? So what happened to them? Are they being holed up or what? I, If anything, I think they might end up showing up in the next chapter. And it was still prologue, which... I don't mind because I don't because uh, you know I, again, of course I do mind the fact that we're still in the same spot when we have a moving story. But kind of like Grimjaw recruiting, joining in and the other guys, the full bringers guy, you know when they join in, maybe they would bring some a little bit of exciting moments, uh, not exciting moment, but like something um, something to talk about for a brief, something good, good noticeable moments, stuff like that. Right now it's just. It's, it's straightforward, but it takes a long time to to um, get to the next point. It, it, it drags out because, you, again, you could just summarize saying, like, Isaac couldn't do it because he got under control. The, Quincy shot some arrow trying to take him out. Quincy got betrayed because the other guys really want to go against Yauch, and that's it. See, it's like that simple. So, you know, decent chapter. I don't know what I don't know if we're going to get to the Soul King's Palace yet, but we'll see. If anything good moment, good funny moments for the next chapter with like I don't know, with guys were from guys Grim Jaws, Food Bringers, whatever if they ever shows up in the next chapter, then maybe it'll be all right, but I in story-wise, let's just get to the point already. So, Fairy Tale chapter 427. Now, remember, Lunasu, Lushi, and Happy were, in fact, right up close to that Avatar place. So, you know, of course they say attack, but they literally mean attack by actually go head on to the main cat, to the main entrance and just blast through it. Thankfully, Lucy is smart enough to not do that, so they decided to sneak in. Well, she decided to sneak in because it would be an easier way to find Grey. That is true. <laughs> so, thank God she's there. Then so she summons Virgo, which Sha Ali she was punishing herself because she has a lot of free time for herself. Okay, well Lucy thought it was weird. She has problems, I guess. That's her character. You know, I haven't seen Virgo in the other form, the big, scary form. But you know, this one is all about punishing herself. So whatever she did wrong, she would punish herself. Yeah. Anyway, at least Lucy could do star dress. Uh, she went. She did star dress and went to Forgo form. Uh, pretty much joining in the sneak attack with uh, Virgo, and you know, Nasu. It was the first time Nasu seen it and happy as well. It was like, oh my god, she transforms and stuff like that. And it's nice enough to um, see that she could do a lot of them. Actually, I think she could do all her summons. Uh, what I I, what I wanted to know is how the fighting would go with it. Because we didn't get to see the entire uh, entire action coming from that star dress form. Remember, she just did a kick, which that was awesome. So, you know, I, I, I can't wait to see, like, what she could do without being without being just a summoner. I mean, she was it was good enough that she could do the, all that summoning and whatnot. I, just, uh, I think it would be kind of cool, more cooler, I guess, much cooler... If she was like fighting on her own way, I mean, she was doing that with the whip, but now she could do it like with the star dress form, which I like. I like that kind of t- uh, take on their character. So they sneak in, and then Nasu scream out for N- Gray, pretty much defeat the purpose of sneaking in stealthily, you know. But instead, he screams out for Gray. Everybody heard him. Gray heard him, and already recognized that's Nasu. Lucy just got so pissed off. Like, what are you trying to do? What was the whole point of this? And then Abu shows up. So Abu does, in fact, has that voodoo doll from Norison. Or, well, in this case, this is the Norison voodoo doll thing. And he got it from somewhere from the Grimoire Hearts, I think. I think that's what he said. Um, you know, I expected, like, a, a, uh, a similar combat from that time. Well, a little. Not, not all that similar because, you know, these guys are stronger. To the point that Nasu one shot him, so never mind about that part. <laughs> Oops, 
it's rather funny because I was used to. I understand Natsu's that strong. I understand they really hype him up with the last, not last chapter, but a while ago with him against Blue Note. And, you know, he did that one shot blast. Fine. And this one, he one shot punched him. And that was it. So I was like, wow, that was quick. I, I don't know if these girl, if this girl is going to be um pretty weak to fight. We'll see. But so far, one is down. <laughs> then Gumon shows up. And he's tagged some of all the torture device, which please Virgo, of course. And Nasu got caught in a casket, supposedly he gets killed in a spider spikes. But luckily he's that powerful that he melted away from the eyeball spot, which I guess he shot him from the eye. And then he just shot him down, take him out, beat him up. And uh, unlike Abel, Gumon is at least on conscience. So, you know, despite the fact that Nasu could one-shot a lot of people now, I guess you could say these characters need to fight something a little bit lower tier. Maybe, you know, like the guys that's going to show up soon from Gajo Army. Who knows? Uh, Lucy, I'm not sure how powerful she is. She claims that she really got powerful. Uh, Her star dress forms are really promising. So we'll see what happens. I'm not sure these guys are just easy taking. Um, and then you have D6 showing up and he got taken down as well. I don't even think we get to see his power. So, yeah, like I said, Nasu could take care of by himself these three guys at least. Then Grey comes, which I actually thought we was going to wait up until like maybe chap- 10 chapters later. Or 5 chapters later even. But we're getting him right now. I don't believe that they're going to fight each other and they're going to square it off. Once and for all, I do believe they're gonna comfort. They're gonna have a conversation, and then Gray leaves, and they will meet up again in, within the same arc. Don't worry, we're not gonna have another Sasuke. And you gotta stop saying Sasuke. A lot of series does this anti-hero stuff. Okay, so, but you know, I understand. Anyway, so we're gonna have these two finally talk to each other. Nasu already started talking like everything is normal, because that's Nasu for you. And that's where the chapter ends. You know, overall, it was a fun chapter. It's not too, It's not a bad chapter. It was fun. Uh, it's funny to see Nasu just one shot at everybody. At, at, at least for this, at least um, with these guys. Uh, maybe the, the other members, they're a little bit harder, stronger. I'm not sure. Maybe these guys are going to be out of the match already. Gomon, D6, and Abu. Abu's already unconscious, so we'll see. Maybe we're only gonna deal with like uh, the uh, the rest of them, the one that we know already, the the Jerome and whatnot. And Gray, I feel like Gray must be taken down by Natsu because you know this is like the only chance this rivalry could conclude. So you know this is this is the way how it's being handled. I don't mind this at all. Uh, I'm just hoping whatever has happened with Gray, Gray and Natsu. You know, I, I just don't think we should have another repeat of the cliche anti-hero s- style. We already come back with that Naruto thing. I'm not, you know, I, I'm trying not to think there's going to be too much of a similarity before everybody really thinks this series is mocking them. Some people really believe this series is mocking Naruto, but it's coincidence. That's all I'm saying. It is coincidence. Other than that, it was a fun chapter. I I I I, I want to see how this next chapter plays out. Hopefully, you know, it, it is more of a lighter term instead of making Gray too much of an asshole. I hoping for that. So we'll see. We just have to wait. So with Seven Deadly Sins Chapter One Twenty One, this was a pretty intense chapter, and not only intense but <laughs> pretty violent. <laughs> you know, it's funny because this is the same. This is being published in the same magazine as Fairy Tale, which, you know, it finally occurred to me that Fairy Tale is pretty light on violence. I don't even, I don't remember the last time we see blood <laughs> so you, or anything, like anything that says, whoa, this is too graphic, you know, minus the fan service, okay? Anyway, point is, I, I don't know what part <laughs> that the, I don't know what part that's pretty like heavy content or, you know, for a Shonen series, no less. So, seeing Seven Deadly Sin being this violent, you know, it kind of, it, it keep reminding me, oh yeah, they could get violence. <laughs> I mean, yes, I read Tokyo Ghoul, but that's Senen, come on. 
and you know I keep forgetting Attack on Titan is Shonen. So that's an, that's another thing for me. I keep thinking of sending. I don't even know what I'm thinking anymore. You know what? Let's just get to the review of this chapter because this chapter was pretty fun, pretty intense, and um, you know, it has a nice, has a really nice um sceneries yeah, and I a lot of good actions set piece. I don't know what happened to the anime. I believe the anime just finished, and I don't know uh, how exactly they finished. I heard it's an anime original ending, but I could be wrong. But, you know, it's going to be a while that we're going to see these kind of uh, scenarios to be animated. Because this is with, this is just the beginning. And it's with the, the Ten Commandments. So, in due time. Now, you know, we have um, Galen right behind Merlin. And then Slander decided to go after him. Thinking his, you know, he's going to do that overpower move. But, unfortunately, Galen is way too powerful. It's like fighting, a, I don't know, like a mountain of... And a mountain of power, which is too much, pretty much. And he got wrecked in one shot. You know, he's not dead, but he just got wrecked pretty badly. It felt like it felt like his body was getting crushed with, with a gravity of force and stuff like that. And then Merlin's trying to make an offer. It's like trying to do in the delay because you know she got to figure out how to how to um. Make him go away and manage to save everybody, which is not easy because Galen is pretty damn powerful. And with the nick of time they have, I don't even think that's even possible with these scenario. Unfortunately, Galen is the the truth of Ten Commandments. So because of Merlin made a lie, she turned to a statue. So pretty much, don't lie to that guy. You make a lie, then you turn to a statue. So that's one way to figure it out to the, if you're a person, if you're a liar. Though that would be bad. It'd be then again, it would be nice for the in real life. But like we're gonna find out you're the killer. Did you kill this man? No. Oh, he turns this at you. Oh, guilty. But whatever. But then again, we, we're gonna have him. We're gonna have a lot of people turning statues. Let's not have that, okay? So Merlin turns to a statue. And yeah, again, you only turn to the statue by Galen if you tell him a lie. Damn. Then Miller does finally decided to go to the demon form because what other what other chance do they have? They need to do something. They need to take him out. They need to make him go away and hopefully they could just like recover. So Miller does turn to a demon. And pretty much started fight on and his power was increasing. I think it was like around eleven thousand um so yes definitely need the most needed power up right now and it only begs me the it only makes me question how exactly the seven deadly sins is gonna match up to these demons you know these ten commandments because they all overpower we really we really know that i just want to know how they're gonna manage to equal them are they gonna have a lot of three on ones are they gonna have a lot of uh uh multi-man versus one man army are we gonna have those kind of fight? Are we gonna if we're gonna have one on one? How exactly are they gonna manage to balance it? I mean, unless there's gonna be a lot of ass pull along the way, I don't know. But it is gonna be interesting to see how they're gonna e- equal up. In the meantime, we have this whole uh, middle that's going demon for they fighting on there's a lot of crazy intense um, cutting people in pieces, their face off, their head off. It's it's. Crazy violence. Um, Melodus loses his arm only to recover bad, thankfully, because of his power. I'm telling you, the, <laughs> this this damn chapter, this damn series is pretty damn gruesome for its own kind. Or maybe it's just that, you know, again, this is the same magazine as Fairy Tale. Do math. So Melodus, you know, he's losing he's losing a little bit of control because he's he's because of the darkness is trying to consume him. But you could tell Melodus, you know, no matter no matter how much that thing is uh, a pain in the ass, he needs that power. He has to maintain that control. You know, he has to control that power eventually. Uh, actually, I think this this arc is going to be the time because right now he's just getting his ass kicked. And then when he managed to, um, you know, get the best out of it or managed to at least, I don't know, get the get the, the strong part of it. Or maybe still holding back because Galen defeated that mode easily. It's possible that he, you know, it's possible that Miladis has to 
get the entire power instead of like getting parts of it i know he's gonna consume them i know he's gonna lose his mind again but it, it has to be done because gallon is just that strong and he's just a, one of the henchmen so imagine with the other guys the the, the leader of them he's and 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 not only that but the the whole seal from the goddess if it's gone it's game over so i don't know how this is going to play out in the future and yeah, Gallen just take out Melodus. Felt so disappointed to see his power being so lower, so nerfed, so downgraded, whatever. It, it disappointed him. So he decided to just take him out. He stab him right in the head. You actually get to see it the entire scene. He stab him right through his face. Sliced Diony, uh in, not in half, but short sliced her pretty bad. Um, wrecked Slander again destroyed Merlin as a statue and trying to kill Elizabeth and, and Arthur but they're in the perfect cube which he Gallen acknowledged that this is one thing he can't destroy which makes sense perfect cube if it's destroyed that ain't so perfect right but seriously it, it is one of the highest tier spells so of course it cannot be break and Gallen's like you know what my exercise is over so he leaves he goes back to his team I guess and yeah, everybody got destroyed. Everybody dead, quote unquote. Now, Merlis, Merlis did say that because of the perfect cue still there, that would mean that Merlin is alive. Or at least, you know, yeah, it's alive. But I'm not sure how. I, I can understand the statue not breaking part. You know, of course, she's technically alive still. But then when she when her when her statue breaks, bro, uh, when her statue got broken, destroyed the perfect cube were still there so that means she's somewhere uh, unless she she has a one last minute spell unless she um teleported out of that statue phase i have no idea then we have Goddard coming back laughing his ass off like a villain <laughs> and, and naked no less so it's it's so many craziness going on with this series that it really appeals to me so yeah this was an intense fun chapter and you know we get to see the demonstration of how powerful Galen is it's, it's the usual thing to show what how powerful this one villain is capable of but you know it was a really fun one and you know it it, it really it really demonstrated that how they, these guys are no joke because we came back from that seven deadly sins being like the top of their world until the demons are out. Now they're being the top of the world. So I don't know how they're going to balance it out. Whenever they, the time is right. When it comes to fighting them again. Because they got to fight. They got to stop them. They got to take them out once and for all. And this is before the seals uh, breaking off. So yeah. This is the only shot. But yeah. This chapter was pretty good. Intense. Violence. And I want to see how they're going to play out for the next chapter. Exactly how these guys are going to live. I hope it doesn't feel too much of an ass pool. And I hope. Hopefully it explained well enough. Because we just have this guy coming back. Naked. Laughing his ass like he's a villain. Like the main villain of all villains. But we'll see. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. You know a lot of things in the future will be uh, explained pretty well. And hopefully it doesn't feel like this is coming out of nowhere. I know it's like a, a lot of DBZ tier style. The whole explosion. The whole crazy amount of factors. But you know. It is it is pretty it is really really enjoyable series. And I can see why a lot of people are really picking this up. So yeah. Pretty good chapter. Let's see how the next one plays out. Bako no Hero Academia chapter 37. Deku and Bakugo meet up in that area because... Because, well, Deku is coming up next, fighting Shoto, which is going to be exciting. Anyway, Bakugo was going to take a seat until his next match comes in. And, you know, I do appreciate this event happening because Bakugo was under the impression that Ruoka was, you know, was talking to Deku, getting some strategies. And he didn't like that fact they're close, they're close to, you know, to strategize these uh, uh, plans. Though Deku finally tells him, you know, she never asked him for a plan or anything. She came out all by, by herself. So if anything, if anyone was to bust your balls, that would be her. 
which <laughs> again in this chapter he has two um two um uh shot fires moments this one was one of them because again Bakugo believed that Uroka was at, was talking to him to get some strategy to go against Bakugo and you know he did struggle a bit I mean I wouldn't say it was like an equal combat but ba- Bakugo was like oh crap this is actually a, a pretty uh, sticky situation so yeah he, he got shot fired telling him she did it all by herself she was she was that good so yeah more power to that and Bakugo went up to the stadium take a seat and you know people believe that Bakugo got it easy because you know, you have a fragile girl, Ruka. So he said, "What part of what part of her is fragile?" In other words, he this is his way acknowledge her being a, a good opponent, which I like this. I like this because you know, Bakugo is always a a, hard, a hot-headed bastard that keeps cursing every single moment, and he even call her angel face, which is kind of weird. But the point is, he is a he's a hothead. He is kind of hard to tolerate. So I'm hoping, you know, maybe down the line by the the finals, if everything goes well, I'm hoping that um Deku will to you know convert him in a way because he is still under he's still not acknowledging how good Deku is or anything else. He's always he's always about him 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 him, and to the point that you know they tease him that's like you sure you sure play a good heel, which you know this is about superheroes. So why the hell he's playing a villain? <laughs> so. I I I want to see how this is gonna develop him further. The um, Deku meets up with Ruka, and you know she you could tell she was already holding back on her loss, you know her sadness because you know this means this meant a lot to her. And if you remember the old chapter, this was for her parents. Her parents, you know, her their companies. The companies is not doing so well to the point they could really lose a lot of money and they could be pretty poor and you know the worst case scenario homeless so she's doing her best and i appreciate that which is funny because when you go back to the old chapter before you get the understanding why she's doing it for the money it almost come in a pressure as a selfish person <laughs> i was like huh that's a out of that's something new for a uh, heroine but you know it makes sense and it does come off really um goofy in a way well not goofy but selfish in a way but the the real behind the real reason behind it is really um touching. So I like this this whole um conversation between him, uh, between her and Deku, and you can tell Deku. I mean, he really knows that he can really help her because she's really um holding back a lot of things, and, and it's not that easy when it comes to like, hey, don't feel bad. There's always another time. Again, she really tried her hardest to get it accomplished in this same year. So I can't really blame her for all this scenario. And then when Deku leaves, she has a phone. Well, not has a phone call, but she picks up a phone and talks to her dad. And again, you know, talking about like she tried her best. The parents keep telling him, keep telling, keep telling her that she's doing great. She did a great job. And there's always another chance. And then she keep making herself look bad by saying like, but I could have won. It was a bad strategy. It's like, no, it's a good strategy. You did good. It's like, but I'm so weak. I was just, my stamina just ran out. It's like, yeah, but there's always another time. You learn stuff like this. You know, she keep downplaying herself. And the parents are just not, it's telling, telling her, don't feel that bad. They, they, they don't worry about them. And I like this. It, it feels realistic. Even with these characters that have superpowers. You know, the whole backstory of why they want to do this. Why they want to become superhero. You know, it has that real personal uh, a real personal development and a real personal feelings that you could feel attached to them, that you could relate to them. Like, you know, I'm without going too personal, I do. The, I I too do the same thing. Like, I'm trying to get a a really decent job. I mean, I have it now, but back then I was struggling to find a job. I was struggling to find a a, a decent job just to help my parents because my parents did enough for me. I want to pay them back. And it's not like I'm having a financial issue. I never did, but I feel like I really want to owe up to them so much, you know. So I could relate to this, and I, I, I maybe I'm not may not relate to the part that they're going to be financially broke, but I can relate to them like really, really doing their best to, you know, really doing their best to get to the best 
a decent job or or something that you really want to do for your your dream you know her again her wish is to be a superhero in order to pay the fill, billing for the parents and stuff like that so she really loved her parents as her parents love her this is a really nice touching scene of family bonding and then deku heard a little, uh, her crying so, and Deku already acknowledged that she he can't really do anything much for her. So he he the best he can do is have her watch him succeed. Which she told him he's gonna watch her back. She's gonna she's gonna watch his back and ho- and wish for him to win. Which you know uh, this is a nice touching moment as well. Which you know I don't know what what is all this then? But <clears throat> let's not go to that conclusion. So then we have Endeavor. Popping out of nowhere, and Deku meet up with him. So, because in when since Endeavor's son is fighting him, he's telling him, "Give it the best you got, because your power is as similar as uh, All Might." And pretty much, he doesn't know that All Might and Deku are sharing the same power because you know of uh, the whole scenario. But then again, it should have been it should be kept a secret, I guess. So. Deku tells, oh, not Deku, Endeavor tells him, you know, give all he got so he could force his son to use the fire power. Since, remember, he's he hates his dad for making him, for having a reason to give birth to Shoto, you know, the selfish, the most selfish reason, which is pretty messed up. And, you know, Deku, again, once again, did another shot fire scene telling him, you know, I'm not the same as All Might. And he's like, yeah, that's pretty obvious. But you also, Toroku, Toroki is not the, Toroki, sorry, um, is not the same as you. So pretty much telling him, we're not following your generation. We're doing our own generation needs. So back off. I, again, two shot fires and one chapter by Deku. He made a good progress there, boy. So then we're gonna find. Then we see them. Show, we see Shoto and Deku in the ring and about to fight off. And unfortunately, the chapter ends. So to me, the next chapter is actually uh, an important chapter because not only this, this fight is gonna be an interesting one, but it also gonna show me the potential this series can have. A lot of the previous chapters, you know, they all are uh, uh, very. Uh, they all had a different scenario. Like for example, with the Deku fighting that guy who could um, who could brainwash, which almost seems like a villain power more so than a hero power. The fact that the fact that that pop, that match wasn't more of a more of a, a power versus power or anything like that. It was more like a tactics of one mind control versus uh, a person who could push them away with one hit. But in this one, it's gonna be like all power. It's gonna have ice, fire, and the power of strength. So I'm actually really looking forward to this because I do believe this this one this fight is could last up to three chapters, maybe two. I don't mind two chapters. One chapter would be a little bit questionable. It makes sense with Uraka versus Bakugo because it was more of a one underdog character that really tried the hardest and don't really want to lose because of the whole you know again she wants to be the hero for her parents so that he could help her parents financially and everything else so it was more of a feel sorry sympathy fight while being badass which i like again i really like that chapter this chapter was, was also pretty good too it got me excited for the next chapter and yeah that's much i can say about the next one it really i haven't seen how the fight is going to be like again uh again uh i know Deku is too powerful, even though he can't control it because he will break a bone or two, or, or he could break the entire whatever he strikes. Like, if he strikes his finger, his fin- that finger is going to break, whatever like that. So, I'm not sure we're ever going to see, like, a full strength momentum moments. Maybe in the finals. But, again, this second round, this whole preliminary round, it's going to be an interesting one. It's, it, again, we, we, we're most likely going to see Shoto using the firepower because... Deku is gonna be that powerful. Or Deku is gonna break every ice that it comes to by him, and it's easy to break ice. Not easy to break fire. I mean, maybe the strong wind of strength will blow up the fire, but in the terms of ice, you could break it. At least in Deku's case. So I can't wait for the next chapter. I'm really hoping this is the 
this is where it gets really exciting in terms of combat. I like the series. This series is a little bit underrated from the people. It's getting popular in Japan, which is nice. I feel like it's underrated in terms of um, the crowd in the in in other, uh, outside of Japan, especially when the the chapter itself comes out in a Monday rather than on a Thursday, along with the other series. But you know, uh, it is new. It's still young. Thir- chapter 30, 37 chapters. Give it time, and hopefully uh, it will pick up more uh, by by uh, others, and the translator will get more support because he's doing a good job. Especially translating notes, you know, give us the idea why Bakugo keep cursing or more like why it's being translated that way. So, you know, I, I can't wait for the next chapter. Hopefully it will show off cool action scenes and hopefully the potential will actually appeal to many audience. And that's it for today's episode. And remember, in two weeks, we're going to have two episodes per week. And you know it will be good. And it will be good for me because again, it will actually fixate in my scheduling plan. And you know the podcast won't be that long. I mean, you could say it will be long if you combine both of them. But then again, uh, like I said, the recording session it will be easier on me and it will be shorter on me. Believe it or not. And plus, I will start doing like uh, like uh, putting a timer so you you could skip to that review like you don't want to hear fairy tale review you just want to hear the review of another series you can go to that i'm gonna start putting that maybe today in this episode or the next episode i'm gonna start being more organized with my youtube episode i'm gonna organize my channel page i'm gonna organize a lot of things i'm gonna start setting up for the next um for the next um uh, podcast episode i'm learning more and more getting more experience Planning things ahead. I am going to have my soapbox starting with the Naruto spinoff chapter one uh, and so far. My Tumblr page is going to be filled with more stuff. Uh, I'm going to start posting more factual information. I I don't really put rumor unless I just say rumor. There's a rumor about this and that. I'm not going to be like, okay, this uh, this rumor, I'm going to make it into a fact. And then later on, I'll end up proving wrong because that would be... Because that was my selfish reason just to get attention or stuff like that. I mean, people could be wrong. I, I have been wrong too. But, you know, I, I like to I like to make 100% sure before posting it for you guys. So, you know, uh, uh, if you haven't followed my Tumblr page, but the Tumblr page is sparta3g.tumblr.com. I hope to see you there. I hope you can follow me because I will start posting more things, start reblogging more things. When it comes to posts, it'll be like Twitter. It'll be like, hmm, this is an interesting thing, interesting fact. I'll start posting some other things as well. I'm going to end up posting more things that I haven't done in the Tumblr. Uh, and, you know, you might care or not care. Uh, it's something I really want to do just for the fun of it. And that's about it. So two weeks, we're going to have a lot of new things coming by. I'm still trying to work things out with my podcast episode. I want to transition. I want to intro. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to be too demanding, so I'm not even rushing these things. I'm taking my time. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Continue your continue the support. And, you know, if you haven't subscribed, please just subscribe and spread the word. I'm going to start spreading the word to everyone else very soon. Uh, the only reason I haven't spread is because I feel like I'm not ready. You know, uh, I'm still inexperienced. Yeah, so, but then again, maybe I should not shy away from the world. Maybe I should just go on, right? I'll, I'll do that very soon. Trust me. So, thank you for your support. I'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.